principle, a general um, statement, perhaps, is made about a, a, a particular group. So the Salaf used to say about, for example, uh, whoever uh, says, بِقُولَ خَلْقَ الْقُرْآنِ فُوَ كَافِرٌ or who is Jahmi. So they used to make takfir mutlaq on the Jahmiya. So all the Jahmiya, they're disbelievers. Come on, you're Jahmiya, you're a disbeliever. Okay? Also, they whoever says the Quran is created, khas, disbeliever. This is takfir mutlaq. That means it gives a description, a general description of uh, of and whoever falls into that description disbelieves. Okay, that's the general hukum. What's very important is going now to takfir ma'ayyan, and that's what also the Shaykh uh, alluded to in the first thing. He said, in Ahl hum ala and yahkumu ala shakhs. When you make a judgment on a particular individual, that's called takfir al ma'ayyan. Making a judgment of takfir, or pronouncement of takfir on a specific individual, this is takfir al ma'ayyan, meaning that that particular individual, you're saying so and so. Abu Lahab is a kafir. This is takfir al ma'ayyin that Allah mentioned in the Quran. Um, Abu Talib also. Abu Muttalib. He also uh, was uh, a disbeliever. So that's takfir ma'ayyin. We know those behind him. We know these specific individuals that they are disbelievers. So. How that relates to us now, when someone says that so-and-so is a disbeliever. Why? Because they did this major sin, and I mean, they did this thing that takes them out of the fold of Islam. They said pork is halal for them, you know, drinking wine is halal for them. That means they fell into istihlal, making something, making the unlawful, lawful. <clears throat> and they uh, have, have done the major kufr. But before making those judgments, we have to look at some other principles. It seems complex, but it shows you how serious it is. This is what the ulama of Islam, it's not from me. So don't say you guys are making it so difficult that no one needs the fold of Islam. Absolutely not. But realizing the seriousness of it, of it that the ulama, they realize how serious these pronouncements and to avoid the tariqah of the khawarij or the murjia, that these principles, these principles come from kitab al sunnah. They come from the Quran and the Sunnah. So we cannot make takfir according to our desires and, and without any principles. Just saying, well, I don't like him, I disagree with her, disbeliever. La. Or even if you see them doing the, that which takes them out of the fold of Islam, la. A couple of very important points. We're going to try to be as brief because these are very uh, in-depth issues uh, and we need some clarity about it. And just so that we have some uh, comfort, hopefully, that you know this was my master's thesis was about this. So I spent at least four years studying in depth about this issue of takfir, sitting with scholars in Saudi Arabia, uh, discussing issues of takfir, asking them, you know, asking them many questions, recording it. You know, I've done research about this, so that's why I'm trying to do it, and and, and why we're discussing it, and why. We'll also try to be as brief as possible and give us some of the tidbits, some of the general principles related to it. So the Sheikh also said, uh, so he said that we do not uh, declare a Muslim to be, uh, for a sins, to be a disbeliever unless it's shirk bilah, unless it's a major shirk that takes a, fold of a, a person out of the fold of Islam. Of course, they can come back to Islam, they can take the shahada, make uh, themselves away from that, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in, uh, in the law, Allah yaqfir and yushrik abihi wa yaqfir amadun adhalik and lemin yasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily Allah, in the law, Allah yaqfir and yushrik abihi. Verily Allah does not forgive those who commit shirk with him, meaning the major shirk that takes you out of the fold of Islam. And if you die upon it, wa yaqfir li duni wa yaqfir maduni adhalik and lemin yasha. And he forgives whoever does other than that from uh, as he pleases. Letting us know that if you die upon the major shirk, you're a disbeliever in the hellfire forever. Wa'iyadun billah min So it's very it's very important to, of course, beware 
uh, any and all forms of shirk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Kitab al Kareem, Inna hum may yushrik bi Allahi fakad haram Allahu alayhi al Jannah, wa ma'wahu al Nar, wa ma'al al Zalimin al Ansar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily he, verily the one who commits uh, polytheism with Allah, you know, associates a partner with him, worships someone with Allah, besides Allah, then this, then Allah has prohibited them from haram Allahu alayhi al jannah. Allah has prohibited him from jannah, has made it haram, prohibited absolutely for that person to enter jannah. And his abode is the nab, is the hellfire. And in the ayat also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and for the mean, there's no insan, meaning there's no, gonna, no one going to help them. If you die upon shirk, may Allah protect us from going back to kufr after having tasted iman. May Allah protect us, ameen, all of us, especially those people who came to Islam, because we see so many that were not fortunate to be blessed to stay Muslim. So many. So may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with aman, ameen, ya rabbil alameen. That there will be no helpers for them. Now let's get into something absolutely imperative. The shaykh, there's many more things. Um, but I wanted to get more specifically about this issue of takfir. Ahabatifillah. Al hukm al amal min amal sawa ma yata'alak minha bil itiqal o aqwal o amal al jawarih. بأنه كفر أو ليس بكفر باب توقفه مرجعه السمع ولا مجال فيه للاجتهاد والنظر بل هو حق لله ثم رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس لأحد في هذا حكم وإنما الواجب هو تسليم لحكم الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. This is a statement of our Sheikh Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili حفظ الله تعالى. He said the making a judgment or pronouncement upon someone uh, 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 an action from one of the uh, from one very, the various types of actions or those things which relate to the etiquette or aqid or creed or a statement or an action that someone has performed with their limbs to make this judgment that this is disbelief or that it's not disbelief is from the bad tawqifi meaning that there is no room for the intellect it has to do with the sharia it has to do with the way it was revealed it has to do with the Quran and the sunnah best the sunnah the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa there's no room for intellect and, 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 and you know, and for it to be an arbitrary hukum, or even ijtihad, even ijtihad as far as those, uh, those a'mal, and, and those, those ahkam, because it is, uh, you know, it has to do, as he said, he said, la majal fihi li ijtihad, there's no room for ijtihad, as I just said, when another, and look at, you know, uh, you know, Check, looking at it at the issue in a different way or what have you, rather it is the haq of Allah. It has to do with the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, so then his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it's not for anyone to make this ruling, and it is wajib, it's an obligation to be comforted with the ruling, the rule of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning that you can't make up something uh, and, and say someone is a disbeliever because of that. It shows you the seriousness of the issue of making takfir. And takfir, of course, when you make takfir on a specific individual, you have to have evidence. It's not, it's not from your intellect. It's not from, you know, you have to have evidence, clear evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You meet those conditions for takfir. And that's showing how serious it is. That it's not something to play with. And that it's not a room uh, there's no room for it. She had in those those Messiah. but making the ruling on a specific individual, of course, this is the ijtihad of that alam. You know, he's not playing with those principles, but that alam, those people who are mustahik, 
you know, who are who are rightfully have that that knowledge and, and, and that role, you know, this is they do this out of they have to have total clarity. But still another alum might disagree with him. You know, if it is something where it is uh, you know, where where there's room for difference in even on the specific issue. But talking about those issues where it's clear from Kitab Sunnah, there's no ijtihad, there's no debate with regards to that. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, and this is very important, in al kufr wa fisq ahkam al-shari'iyah laysa dhalika min ahkam allati yastaqil biha al-aql fal kafir min ja'alahu Allah wa rasooluhu kafir وفاسق من جعله الله ورسوله فاسق كما أن المؤمن والمسلم من جعله الله ورسوله مؤمن ومسلم. شيخ الإسلام ابن سيمية and there's so many other statements of the the salaf I have here but we'll, we'll keep it concise because this is sufficient what Shaykh Islam said. رحمه الله تعالى he said that uh, <coughs> that disbelief and fisk, declaring someone to be a fasik, a wicked sinner, are sharia rulings. And this is not uh, from the types of rulings which you use, which the intellect is used uh, by itself, where they, they, you know, that these are made based on intellectual judgments or what have you. Then he, he clarifies, he says, the disbeliever is who Allah and His Messenger وسلم, declare to be a disbeliever. And the fasik is the one who Allah and His Messenger وسلم, declare to be a fasik. Meaning if it's mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, that's what we accept. If Allah says, whoever does this is a disbeliever, we accept that that's, that's the case. Whoever does this and this is a, dis, is a, a wicked sinner, that's what we accept. That's what, you know, there's no room, there's no majal for the intellect to say, well, you know. But, what's very important is also to know the tafsir, of course. And, you know, that's for the ahlan, people of that fin, the tafsir of those ayats. For example, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ وَلَيْكُمْ مُفَاسِقُمْ وَلَيْكُمْ مُكَافِرُمْ وَلَيْكُمْ مُظَالِمُونَ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, which is not in that tartib, those ayat, but just mentioning that Allah declares the uh, those people who do not rule by His rule, by what He's revealed, to be disbelievers, and to be valimin, and to be fasateen, okay? However, that does not mean that there is an additional details which the Salaf of this Ummah, which the Sahaba came with because they were the ones who were there when those ayats were revealed. They know the context of those ayats, they know the explanation of those ayats, letting us know that there's two types of kufr. So sometimes Allah, what Rasulullah mentioned in the Sus, something is kufr, but it may be that can be either the major kufr or the minor kufr. As the, the Salaf of this Ummah understood it. And that's the important thing that we don't just take an ayat and we run to make tatbik. And this is what the, the tekfiris do and, and, and the juhala amongst them especially, that they don't know. So then they read an ayat. Brother, I read this in English. Class, he's a kafir. So then they go from te tekfir mutlaq, tekfir mu'ayyana, with not even being able to recite Surah Al-Fatiha properly. So what do they know about istanbat al-hukum? What do they know about deriving the, the hukum uh, upon someone, especially on the issue so serious as tikfir, declaring them a Muslim or not a Muslim. Wa'iyadhan billah min dalal wa kufr wa zandaka wa jahil. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. So this is very important. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi he said that then a disbeliever is the one who Allah and His Messenger make disbelievers. A fasik is the one who Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa make disbelievers. Likewise, the mu'min, the believer, and the Muslim is the one who Allah and His Messenger وسلم, make mu'mins and make as a believer. That's very important to understand that principle with regards to takfir. This I'm going to be as brief as possible because it, it went into overtime but there's just so much to talk about with regards to this mas'ala. The issue, the issue of when it comes to, as we mentioned, takfir mutlaq or takfir ma'ayin. Takfir mutlaq is the general takfir. Takfir ma'ayin is when we talk about a specific individual. 
Tekfir al Ma'in, it has certain shuru, certain conditions. These conditions are an yukun ma'ayin baladin aqlan. So the first condition for uh, a shart min shuru to tikfir, tikfir al ma'ayin, is that the uh, that the person has uh, is baladin aqlan, meaning that they, they possess their intellectual capacity, so they're not crazy. So the opposite of that, the mafhum of that, and this comes to the mu'ani of tikfir, which we're not going to really talk about, but we'll just integrate it all so to keep it as simple as possible. Meaning if someone was uh, crazy, you can't make tikfir of them. Even if they did an action of kufr. Meaning this person, if you know if we know this person thabit to be a Muslim, they were raised in a Muslim society, they're known, uh, raised up amongst the Muslims, they're known, you know, as a Muslim. But then they do an act of disbelief while they're insane. Or maybe they, you know, they're not held responsible for that. So you can't make so that's one of the conditions is that the person has to be sane and they have to be mature. Also, if it's a little kid, a little kid, he puts the Qur'an on the ground, he steps on the Qur'an. He uh, urinates on the Qur'an, whatever. This things that every Muslim know, this is total disrespect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech and would be an act of disbelief. But the fact that a little child did it, who's not even mature, doesn't know right from left, you can't make tikfir of them. So this is the point, is that the person has to have the intellectual capacity and they have to be uh, mature. That's the first condition from the shuru of making tikfir on an individual. The second condition of habit tikfirullah, and yaka'a minhu kufr ala wajj al ikhtiyar, meaning that they had the choice to do that, that act of kufr. They weren't forced. So for example, if someone comes, they got their nine millimeter, they put it to someone's head, they say, you say that, say that zina is lawful. Say that, uh, you know, what, you know, stealing and, and killing people is, is okay, say it. They put the gun to your head. Just like these uh, people are doing, ISIS guys are doing to the uh, reporters and stuff like this. So if someone's put a gun to your head and forcing you to utter a statement of kufr or do an act of kufr, this does not take you out of the full Islam then that condition does not apply, or you're unable to, that shart, because the person did not have a choice. They did not have a choice. Now there's some intricate details, but we're just gonna keep it as general as possible. Maybe perhaps in certain sins that are ma'lum min ad bi darura, wallahu alam, that, uh, you know, certain situations, you know, anyhow there's further details, but we'll keep it as, as brief as as, uh, and as simple as possible. So a person has to have a choice in the matter. If someone forces them by gunpoint, forces them, and force, the ulama even explain what does force mean, but definitely your life is threatened and so forth, then <clears throat> it's permissible for you to lie with your heart being content on iman. That's also the condition for that, that you, you have iman in your heart. Your phrase, someone puts a knife to you and say you're not a Muslim. Okay, and he's gonna and you and it. You're you're about that you are almost sure that this person is really gonna slit your throat. You say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm not a Muslim. You, it's permissible for you to do that to preserve your life, your honor, and your and so forth with iman in your heart. But it's not permissible for you to disbelieve in your heart. Okay, the third shunt or condition. Is that the person and tablaghu al hujja alati yukafir bi khilaf khilafiha? That the person has to know that this is kufr or not. That they have to have, you know, the evidence has to have been presented to them. Meaning, if they never knew, they never knew that, uh, you know, such and such act of disbelief was an act of disbelief. You know, it must be presented to them. You know, it must be made known to them that it is uh, an act of disbelief. And of course, Imam Nawawi uh, speaks about this, and I wanted to read a very beautiful statement, which is sort of a little bit of an exception to this, because he's talking about what's ma'lum min ad-din bi darura, except for those things which are known out of necessity in the religion, meaning that every Muslim knows that you are not supposed to make sujood to 
anything or anyone than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not supposed to go to a, a statue and pray to it or or pray to Jesus or pray to the Prophet sallallahu Every Muslim should know that. That is ma'lum min adin bi darura. So if someone does those things, then they, uh, the ulama say, that, khas, that person is a disbeliever without even uh, perhaps uh, establishing the hujjah on the person for that. The fourth thing that I want to mention, and maybe we'll make that the last thing, is that the person is not muta'awalin. Ala yukun muta'awalin. Meaning that the person has not done the act of kufr or disbelief from ta'wil, from a misinterpretation, from interpret. This is why the ulama do not make takfir of the ashaira, of the ashadis. Because the ashadis and probably the diobandis and some of the other groups that make uh, ta'wil with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sifat, they said, no, it means this. It means, hands means power. Uh, instead of astowa ala arsh, it means astola. You know, they change the meaning. They miss interpret, but they still don't outright deny Istoa. So since they didn't totally negate it, even though it's a form of negation, then this ta'wil, then they are excused. And this is why the ulama don't, uh, the ulama of the salaf didn't declare like the ashadis and so forth to be disbelievers. So those are some of the principles of takfir, and I hope it was clear. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me for my many, many sins and any mistakes that I may have made with regards to this. I did want to find the very important statement of Imam Nawawi, but maybe we'll save that for the next sitting.